Okay, Coop, so here we go. We're about to cover your technique. You're a lefty. Don't worry. We have the software that can help us um, still measure perfectly, okay? So you're you're going to be able to uh, visualize everything that I'm saying with uh, with the software and QBTV digital diagnostics. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's going to give you a score here of 73. All right, so what we're going to do is take it all the way back. Are you ready for the cover? Here we go. All right, so the very first thing that we, we cover is uh, what we call locked and loaded. Now, technically, you've got locked and loaded incorrect here. Um, this should have been a red circle at the bottom because you're blocking your front hip. Is that, do you see how you're standing on the target line that we often coach? Yes. Okay. Uh, and obviously we want a closed hip and a closed shoulder with the vertical spine, which you have got that correct. Close relationship with the ball, which you've got that correct as well. Now, as we go through, we got to take that front side and we got to make sure that we get that front side cleared so that we can bring that backside through, okay? Which you do a great job with, you always have. Now, um, I would have given you a red for your ball because of the previous slide. The, the IP coach gave you a green. Um, that's two reds you probably should have gotten so far, okay? You can see how far this ball is behind your head, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, that's about three inches, four inches too far. All right, so that's one thing that we need to uh, get corrected. As we go through, the elbow rises. The ball uh, does get a green because you're a gifted thrower, you're very rhythmic, and you're athletic, so you know how to make it come back to timing. It shows that you've been throwing quite a bit. You know how to throw. All right, so elbow does rise and the ball is visible at an important key point. So that's why he got you green. All right, so now with a centrifugal balance, as good throwers do, they have what's called centrifugal balance and through the, the belt buckle through the throat, the belt buckle through the wrist, the middle point has to be directly straight up. And your middle point is dang near straight up, which means, you're going to throw with balance through your throw, okay? You can kind of see how your your midsection and your body has gotten out of the way and your, and your arm is on the other side of the cylinder and you're throwing through the target with balance. So that is uh, going to give you great accuracy. Now, again, a good thrower has an innate ability to have his, uh, his uh, belt buckle at target, his chest at target when he releases. The Bermuda Triangle is what we call this. Do you know what happens in the Bermuda Triangle, Coop? Planes and ships crash and sink. They're like missing, right? They go missing. You missed a couple things. So do, foot, uh, so do uh, people and footballs. They sometimes don't make it through the Bermuda Triangle as well. So quite often, like baseball pitchers, you know where their chest is pointing when uh, at release point? Usually down in down. a little bit of... And so can you imagine if I was like throwing to, to you, but yet my chest is over here and I'm throwing to you, right? That wouldn't make much sense, okay, in our world. Our world has a moving target and it's very hard to throw accurately if we have just crazy parts everywhere. You do a great job with this, good job. All right, pronation of the hand, you baseball flip. Uh-oh, need to get that pointer finger down, okay? Pointer finger down. And you can see how you didn't you didn't finish you didn't rotate your wrist over, which gives sometimes the elbow to want to bend uh, here. But anyway, going through your shoulders, you see Medusa and you freeze right after release. 
you don't go 180 degrees shoulders, which is you got your left shoulder at, at target, and then you've got to turn them 180 degrees to finish the throw where your right shoulder would finish at target. All right, we're gonna go locked and loaded from the side. Uh, we have a good base here. You can see how you're overclosed with your front foot. Do you see it, how it's closer to us? Yes. And so it blocks your hip off. Your state of preparedness is not at its greatest where you can just step and replace and fire your hip at your target. All right, so we need to get that off target line. But anyway, this from the side, what it's judging is do you have the decent amount of size base? And then are you two thirds in your tank, which you are? Uh, and then your shoulder line is a bit down. You see it, how your shoulder line's a bit down? And your yes. Uh, yes. ball, though, is at a good close relationship to your throw. So most of that stuff, four out of five, they're good. All right, so then we step and replace and push back. So you do a good job with this here. We call this chamber round. Chamber round, the two things that are gonna happen is step and, re uh, and replace and a quick pushback to help the transition. All right, now you need to have good balanced elbows. Um, you've got a pretty good uh, balance of, of weight distribution and you're gonna be able to use that for good torquing. Good job here. Now. You actually, you have a driven leg, but we're not using the left hip to be able to drive the target enough. And you'll notice how you kind of stop in your stance. You don't have great movement forward. I also think that you use too much track line and distance that your ball covers. When you decide to throw, right? Wouldn't you suggest that your ball travels a certain distance until you release it? Yes. Okay, so the longer line that it travels, the longer time it takes to throw, right? Yes, sir. Okay. You put that ball behind your head, don't you? Yes, sir. So now it's taking a longer track line, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think you're running out of runway by the because your base was good. You were two thirds tanked, right? But all of a sudden, your ball's taking too long to get out. You with me? Yes, yeah, so sure. happen. Here's what's going to happen on, uh, on the next frame. Rem remember our conversation right here. And then all of a sudden, you see how long your arm is back? It not only went behind your head, but look how far back it is. Your body weight pushing forward is now done. There is no more body weight pushing forward. You're finished. You see how up front you are? Yes, you're sir. either going to yes, stop at a wall or you're going to flip over like you're on stage on a Broadway stage and did something nice and you're going to get take a bow. So it's either one of two things and then you choose to stop on a wall. You just stop there. See how you are stop? And what you do is you create all these, you get a stiff knee and you, you pop your elbow to try to create some heat because you have no more gas in your throat. You're not shoving at target any longer. Let's take you back real quick to where we were, which is right here. Your early advance, considering where the ball is, should not be that far up in your up on your runway of your base. Uh, but you do have a pretty good 90 here, uh, and you've got level front shoulder to your elbow. Good job there. One ball is 180 away as well. All right. So what's important here is that your your elbow gets height. So it rides the hill, and we call this tack, so target accuracy control. This is where that all happens, and it must take the lead. So your elbow rises, and then it must take the lead in front of the ball. Unfortunately, I believe your ball is too far back at this point. Okay? Again, we're traveling too much space with the ball tracking. Okay, moving on. Now, great job on, four, on your shoulder to your uh, elbow. That, that piece of your arm slowed down to allow the snapping to happen. Now, fortunately, because you, you wrist snap like a baseball guy and you don't pronate and the ball went on your head, what you're, what you're, you're, you have the, uh, you have the want to bend your elbow inward, okay? Because of the laws of physics, working behind your head, here, snap, and around without a, with a baseball flip, it's going to bend the elbow, okay, of what you do here. And, of course, we need an athletic knee. 
And then because you run out of a runway and don't want to be, be bent over, this is how you finish with low finish. You don't rotate your shoulders enough and you don't have any forward body, uh, uh, forward nature, aggressive style nature about your body. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna move on and look at me being left-handed alongside with you. So here we go. You didn't know I could throw left-handed, did you? Here we go. This is, see how the foot is off target line? It's open and ready, state, great state of preparedness to shove hit the target. Closed hip, closed shoulder, vertical spine, and the ball is close relationship. Most of that stuff is good. Your foot, though, is closed. All right, this is truly getting out of the way over here and then shoving your backside through. Now, elbow gains height, ball must be visible. Centrifugal balance, where that middle point has to be balanced, where the midsection to your throat is off to the to one side and your throw is the other side of the balance point. So meaning that our medium is straight up. Now, Bermuda Triangle, where our belt buckle, our chest, are at target at the time of release, meaning this ball is for you. All right, we gotta pronate our hands and point downward of which you have the baseball flip, and then straight elbow. And see see how my finish is with my shoulders compared to yours? Yes. All right. Here we go, moving on. Now, locked and loaded from the side. Level shoulders, big base, gas in the tank, close relationship with the ball. Now, step and replace, chamber the round by a small pushback, level shoulders. Now, I will tell you this, I was throwing a two ball, about a 25 yard ball, and so I have a little rise to mine, so you'll see my shoulders being a little projected. All right, you can see that as is. So a driven hip with a drive leg through, and you got your elbow at 90. You need to drive your hip more, but I'm not so sure if you did drive your hip more, we might have an issue. You might be, you might tip over and fall out over because you haven't thrown the, you're not, your ball's not in the right position yet. You need a bigger base potentially too, but we'll, we'll skinny up the ball tracking uh, or the line that it takes. We'll skinny that up and shorten the time frame. All right, but you can see here, we both have the elbow rise and then, um, and the elbow takes the lead in front of the ball. Now, straight elbow here. See my elbow and arms compared to yours? Yes, sir. Yours is bent. That's bad. That's bad. The health on that is bad. We would rather stay out of it. We would like to stay out of the training room, not in it, right? I don't care how cute sure. little trainers are. Okay? All right. Here we go. And good. Uh, we need to have an athletic front knee. And then a shoulder rotation and finish, that's what it should look like as compared to what you have there. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. And then your score was a 73. Now, look, I think that you have two more that need to be taken out of there. Okay? So that drops your score about uh, seven points. So you really technically scored a 66. Do you understand? All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, get this over to you uh, and published. Give me about 24 hours.